Alrighty, what is going on everyone? So we are now on to the soft start portion of our design phase. We're basically designing the soft start circuit, I should say. Um, so just a quick, some details about the soft start circuit. So the way I want you to view, this is sort of like one of those uh, nice little bells and whistles that some chip manufacturers will put on some of their products. Think of this sort of like uh, a car that has a sunroof or like a nice Bluetooth stereo or something like that. This is something that might come in handy depending on what type of power supply you need to make, depending on when it's going to power. Um, like say you're making a power supply for some really nice studio monitors, like some really nice speakers, like maybe you want, want to use a soft start feature or if you're using like a, a very sensitive electronic device, like you're trying to you know charge a tablet or a, an Apple watch or something like that, then you might want to use something like a soft start. Um, and those, those are just arbitrary examples. Like just what I'm saying is this is like a feature that could come in handy depending on what you're using. And so you'd pick a chip that has this feature based on what you are powering. So that's kind of what the takeaway with this type of feature is. So it's by no means necessary to make your power supply work, but I thought it'd be a good learning experience. So that's why we're going to work with it. Okay. So what it actually does, if you just read the summary and this is included in the data sheet. So the soft start circuit, controls the startup of the whole system by slowly increasing the duty cycle during turn on. So kind of what this looks like is you would, if you were just probing, like say you you had this power supply in a brick, if you're just probing the output of the brick, this is kind of the behavior it would, you would see is, is the slow turn on of the duty cycle. And also I want to differentiate the soft start circuit from the startup circuit, right? Those two count sign, uh, sound kind of similar. But the key difference, and what I just said is, this is the soft start circuit controls the behavior of the entire power supply, right? Versus the startup circuit controls the behavior of just the chip. So we're, we're trying to, with the startup circuit, we're determining how fast the chip itself can turn on and start running. Like it's like a computer, right? It's how fast it's, it can start doing its calculations and start flip switching that MOSFET and all kinds of things. And the soft start is more more on a, a global scale, right? It's 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 uh, zoomed out a whole lot more. We're working at the behavior of the entire power supply as a whole. So I hope that part makes sense. So we'll talk more about the startup circuit, obviously, in the next video. So the main components that uh, are that comprise this soft start circuit are going to be RSS, of course, SS stands for soft start, CSS, along with a PNP transistor to control the soft start feature. Okay. So if you look in the data sheet, I have these two diagrams pulled. And they actually did a pretty nice uh, convenience for us, which is they already showed us what exact PNP transistor they were using. So I just went ahead and that said that's the one we're going to use. So they already did us a favor and picked one of our components for us. So it's, it's pretty nice of them. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be the PNP transistor that we're using in this project. So the next thing we need to do is calculate RSS and CSS. Um, but real quickly, I want to try to explain what this is doing on a very, very close up level, right? So I have these two diagrams that I pulled from the data sheet. And basically what I wanna take a look at is, so the, the main thing that our, what I want you to realize is that the main thing that our soft start circuit is doing is this PNP transistor. So if you must know PNP transistors by default they start out, we'll say they start out conducting, i.e. if there's no voltage applied or no current being supplied to this, let me see, it's a, a the base pin, right? Because it's a transistor, not a MOSFET. So if there's no current being supplied to this base pin, then it's conducting, right? And then if you apply a current, then that's when it stops conducting, okay? So that is um, kind of what that's, so, so what I want you to do is, is look at this line as if uh, at T equals zero, when there's no no current flowing into the base pin, this basically this comp pin right here is shorted to ground. Okay, so that means this comp pin is 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 zero volts, right? And so then what I want you to do is understand and follow the comp pin, right? As see as it goes around town and right here to this little triangle. This is an uh, amplifier, an op amp, right? So this comp pin is tied to the output of this air amplifier. So what I want you to understand is that 
this comp pin, it's basically what you can think of it as it's messing with the output of this air amplifier, right? It's it's pulling it to, to ground no matter what this output would otherwise be. It's it's pulling it to ground, right? So all the currents flowing out this air amplifier into ground. So then if we go to look at this uh, diagram over here, you can see the more inner workings of the chip and understand that so so this air amplifier's job is to send a signal to the other parts of the inside of our controller, right? So we have like to a comparator, we have and this this all ties into some logic which controls which ultimately controls the output, aka this is what is attached to the gate pin of our MOSFET, right? So on startup, this air amplifier signal is being messed with by this comp pin in virtue of this PNP transistor shorting it, right? So the next uh, sequence of events that occurs is this V ref pin starts supplying a five volt voltage to uh, across this RS resistor and ultimately across this capacitor. So basically, what it's doing is charging this capacitor and ultimately uh, turning this this base pin or it's driving this base pin high in order to shut off this PNP transistor. So basically what it's doing is you have an RC circuit, right? So there's going to be some type of con time constant. So after T equals blankety blank, then this, this uh, node right here will be driven high, which will cause this transistor to, to stop conducting. So basically what it's doing, I keep saying that, but what it's to, to, to further explain what it's doing is that after a certain length of time, this comp pin is no longer being shorted to ground. So therefore, after a certain length of time, this air amplifier signal can pass through and go to the rest of the internal uh, parts of the chip, right? So I hope that makes sense. So what we do is basically say, okay, on startup, we're gonna wait so many microseconds, so many milliseconds for this air amplifier signal to be able to be sent to the rest of the chip. That's literally all it's doing, right? And we're we're doing that by control. We're we're doing that by uh, using an RC circuit to control a uh, just to control a, a single pin that, that basically pulls the signal higher low, right? So I hope that was a detailed enough explanation to understand what's going on. Um, if you have any questions, comment down below, and I'll be happy to make more videos explaining something like this. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see more examples of this as well. So. Uh, but yeah, so I hope that was a good explanation of how that worked, right? So continuing on, we'll just talk about now. You just got now that we know that what it does, we'll, we'll calculate our component value. So it's not not that difficult. So let's see, look at my next note here. So say RSS CSS QNS messed with the signal from the amplifier, which affects the startup of the power supply. Yeah. Our, okay, just an RC circuit that slowly charges the base of the PNP transistor. Makes sense because of the PNP transistor, it will start out conducting, aka shorting the output of the Right, so this is the stuff I just covered. So one thing, so if you look at the data sheet, it says to make CSS greater than one microfarad. And the reason we want that is because we want this to take a long time to charge. So there, therefore it takes this a long time to stop conducting, right? That's kind of what we're going for here. And that's the only guidance they really give in the data sheet is to make this greater than one microfarad, right? And then we know by the data sheet, you can check, I think it's even in the the detailed or this we'll look at some uh, specifics on this one so it's like probably I think it's in the section that's like detailed description or something like that just check that out um, I covered how to navigate the data sheet in an earlier video so just go check it I think it was the data sheet walkthrough section um, which was earlier on so yeah we know VRF equals 5 volts so then we know that uh, if VF is five volts, and then we uh, and CSS is one microfarad. We kind of we can get a time constant out of that, uh, depending on what we select our RSS to be. And then I believe the data sheet mentions it, it liking a certain uh, certain charging current. So that's why we want to go. I just said I just picked this value, zero point five milliamps, because I think they said something like make sure the charging current is. Well, they say something like VREF can supply up to one can source up to one milliamp of current. So I just picked uh, IREF, i.e., the current flowing out of VREF, to be zero point five milliamps, just to give us some headroom there. 
and that's how we got to uh, 10k right here because we that gives us five milliamps right there or 0.5 milliamps sorry um, so that's how we end up getting those values so we have ultimately we have RSS equal to 10k ohms and CSS greater than one microfarad so just um, pick whatever value you want for that and the greater you make this the larger you make this capacitor the just the softer your startup will be I guess you could say um, other notes I want to make about this so again this is kind of one of those circuits where uh, package size in terms of package size like a, a my typical recommendation for the stuff is to start out with an 0603 and then go down to an 0402 if you're trying to get these really close to their pins um, for whatever reason like this signal isn't too critical like having because this signal's job is already to mess with another signal so like having this signal be pretty noisy I don't see that being a big deal um, especially because if you read the data sheet it says this whole circuit gets nullified like it gets taken out of the equation basically after the startup right because it's its job is literally only to affect the startup behavior of the circuit so it doesn't actually do anything after that so um, that's yeah that's all I say about that um, and yeah that's pretty much all I have to say um, about this uh, soft start circuit so yeah let me know if you have any questions Drop a like if this video helped you out. That would really help my channel out. And I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. So like right now we're right in the middle of a, an example project I'm doing. So if you want to stay up to date with all the other videos related to this project, then subscribe and you'll see those in your feed. Um, if you want to see other electrical engineering related videos as well, I do you know many different things like Altium tutorials, um, circuit design guides, um, just general electrical engineering like fundamental um, like tutorials and stuff like that so yeah um, thank you so much if you made it this far and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video